Hey everyone, it's Max, and I am here to do a book review of The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. So first, I am going to give you a quick summary and then talk about the plot. So the summary is, it's about a boy named Theo Decker, and he goes to an, a museum with his mom, and there's a terrorist attack, and his mom ends up dying. While he's there, he picks up a painting that is a timeless piece of art, but it was his mother's favorite piece, and it was called The Goldfinch. He meets a man who's dying at the terrorist attack, and he gives him a ring, telling him to go to his place of business. So Theo ends up going, and he ends up meeting this girl who's also part of the terrorist attack, and they kind of bond over it. He then moves to Las Vegas with his dad, and he meets a boy named Boris, and they become really good friends for a few years until things happen, and Theo ends up going back to New York City. Um, I, what I really liked about the plot was it was really steady. You know, it, it I mean... This book is 962 pages, I think it is, so it's a really long book. The plot really kept me entertained, I went through it pretty, I went through it really fast. I read this in about a week, and it was very fast-paced, um, which I find I've read a couple Pulitzer Prize winners or nominees, and they usually, I feel, are a bit slower and they're a little bit more slow-paced, but this one really kept me on the edge of my seat and I really, really loved it. The one, the one problem I had with this book is there was about 200 to maybe 300 pages where it was just Theo and Boris like drinking every day and getting like stoned every day and they both kind of became alcoholics and they were only like 15 and that was kind of hard to read um, because it's told from Theo's point of view so you kind of like get that haze, that drug haze feeling when you're reading it which is kind of... It's just a little bit difficult. Not in the sense like I didn't understand what was going on, but it just kind of dragged on and it got a little long. Okay, next I'm going to talk about three characters, and that's going to be, first is going to be Theo. Um, Theo, he's suffering from PTSD, so through the whole book he has nightmares and he can't stop thinking about it. And the fact that he has this priceless p p painting that people are trying to find kind of doubles that up. He's really worried all the time. He's always thinking about, like, where can I hide the painting? He never touches it, he keeps it very hidden away, and it's, his life pretty much revolves around it. But he is a really sweet kid. He just really got like the worst deal in life. He, his dad sucks, his mom died, you know, all of that sort of stuff just built to him just being a really sad kid. He's really lonely. Um, he kind of attaches on to anyone who shows him any sort of affection, which makes him trust people really easily and also makes him fall in love really easily. Um, but he's a really good kid. He's loyal. He's sweet. Next, I'm going to be talking about Boris, his best friend. Boris, he can be a good friend. He's a really good friend when they're younger. But as they grow up, um, you have a few, like, about, I think, 200 pages where it's when Theo moves back to New York and doesn't see Boris until later on. And he has kind of gotten into a bad situation. He's into bad... Um, like selling fake art, and he's kind of flaky, he's, you know, he pretends to be a good friend, but he would run when the going gets tough, or he steals, and so he's not that good of a person, and he is an alcoholic, he was an alcoholic when we met him, and he's still an alcoholic when we come back to him, which kind of got annoying because he was just, he didn't really care, he was always drinking, he didn't really find anything to be super serious. Um, and then the last person I'm going to be talking about is James Hobie Holbart. And this is a man who's kind of Theo's real father figure throughout the book. Um, it's a man that kept the business running from the man that Theo met in the um, museum bombing. And he is, a, he's like the best character in this book. He's super sweet. He's super loyal. He's very loving. Um, he's trusting of other people almost to the point where it's, like his business is getting ruined by it and he's in a lot of debt. Um, but he takes uh, Theo on to help him get him out of that debt and so Theo works there. Theo ch doesn't choose the best ways to go about getting them out of debt. I'm not going to say much because this is a spoiler free review. But he doesn't make the best choices. Let's just say that. Um, but 
and Hobie, he continues to forgive him for it. He's, he really understands what, um, Theo's going through because he knows the girl who, um, was suffering from PS PTSD who went through the same bombing and he's very supportive, he's very forgiving, he's just, he's just a great guy all around, really. He's just a grade A man. So now I'm going to talk about the writing of the book. It's pretty simple actually, like I didn't really, there weren't any places where I was like, what is she trying to say? Like, I don't get this, what does this mean? It was very simple for a book that's won the Pulitzer Prize, but it was very deep. It was super descriptive. There's great, great character development, especially with Theo because it is a coming of age novel. It goes from him being 13 until 20, I think maybe seven, mid to late twenties. And you just see how he's changed because he does change a lot. And she does a really great, great way of showing um, how he changes based on where he lives because he's very different from when he's in New York City to where he's in Las Vegas and then back. He definitely changes and it's, I just, I think she does a really good job at that. Um, I find it hard to read adult fiction because I definitely think this is what it is. It's not really young adult young adult fiction, but it's still about a younger boy and he's a young adult and him growing up to be an adult and I think she just did a great job at being able to make younger audiences connect with Theo and then older audiences connect with Theo because um, if younger audiences are reading it when he's younger, they can feel how he feels going through high school, you know, he doesn't have many friends and then when he becomes an adult, he goes through trying to make money and like falling in love and those are things that adults can um, connect to and then compared to what kids can, can connect to, I really liked that. I have, overall, this is just a really, really great story. Um, the characters are really awesome, the writing is beautiful and I definitely, definitely would recommend this. If I could give it any more than a 5 out of 5, I totally would, but so far, as it is out of five stars, I do give this a five out of five, and right now this is my favorite book. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Next is going to be a book review of Shatter Me by Tahara Mafi, and that'll be posted pretty soon. All right, bye.